Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite books of 2018. I love watching these videos when the end of the year comes around. Like, I just love watching people get so excited about books that they love and just like freaking out over them. It warms my heart. It's so good. So the first book I'm going to talk about is one I read at the beginning of the year and has pretty much maintained its status as like one of my favorites, possibly even my favorite. This is Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. Okay, so Kristen Kishore wrote one of my favorite fantasy series of all time called Graceling. It is so good and if you haven't read it, you need to read it. I'm telling you, I will come to your house and sit next to you and watch you read it just so I know you've read it. That's how good it is. Like you need it in your life. So obviously when I heard she was coming out with like a standalone, I was like, I'm so into this, like I need it right now. And so I, I don't even know how long I waited, it was years. It, like. That's what I will do for my favorite authors. I will wait years for them to put out new books. And so when Jane Unlimited come out, came out, I was so excited. Jane Unlimited is about a girl named Jane who recently lost her aunt. Her aunt passed away. And she's invited by an old friend to come to that friend's father's estate, which is very fancy, they're very rich, and to attend a party there. Uh, when she gets there, she learns like a cornucopia of information and the book splits off into different timelines. So basically it's a book that's like a choose your own adventure for adults, which just sounds, I mean, even before I read it, amazing, stellar, like how was I not going to read this book? I adore this book. I adored this book with every piece of my heart. Like, the every timeline, okay, is so good. Some of them are like heartwarming, some of them are like espionage, some of them are downright horrifying. Um, like so horrifying and creepy that I just thought about it afterwards. Just like, did I just actually read that? Like there's something for everyone in this book. And also the characters, like, very well crafted. I fell in love with, like, multiple characters in this book, which is how I know it's a good book. And I fall in love with characters way too easily, but, like, they have stolen my soul. Um, and just the detail put into the setting is phenomenal. Like the 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 island and the estate i just wanted to live in this like magical house on this beautiful island with all of these people and like experience all the adventures and there's also like little magical realism easter eggs just like sprinkled throughout like that made me so happy this this book makes me so happy the next book i'm going to be talking about is the subtle art of not giving a fuck by Mark something. I don't remember his name. I should remember his name. I should have looked it up. I'm a bad booktuber. Anyway, it's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and I included this on this list because it is the first self-help book that has gotten me to help myself. Uh, see what I did there? <laughs> it's impacted me like since I've read it. Like my way of thinking was changed and I'm still doing, making changes to my life to make it better that I was recommended to in this book. It is like no nonsense, pulls no punches and just makes such an impact. Like there's, for example, there's a, like a whole chapter about pain and how to grow you have to experience pain 
and fear and anxiety and I was like that was so new to me like that I could put my pain to a purpose and grow from it and I was just like mind blown. The third book I'm going to be talking about is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. The Bells is about a world where everyone is born gray and in this world to turn beautiful you have to have a bell to change the way you look and a bell can tailor appearances in whatever they whatever way they want good or bad so Camellia who is the main character is a bell and she wants to become the bell that serves the royals in her kingdom so I won't tell you anymore because I don't want to spoil anything but it is like one of the best fantasies young adult fantasies I read this year like first of all Camellia such a kick-ass female character who maintains her femininity which I respect you know female characters that you know, completely rid themselves of femininity. I think that's completely valid. But she still maintains the girliness that she loves, and I just was so happy about that. There's also the writing in this. Oh my gosh. Oh, how, how do I even describe this? It was flowery, and not in the sense that it was purple prose, but like it was literally flowery like if I could hold her writing in my hand I'm pretty sure it would be a flower it was gorgeous and like there were times when she described food that I just literally wanted to like uh, lick the page like it was she brought such a beautiful world to life and the mystery like all of the villains and the mystery and it was so good. I don't know how else to say it. So the next book is one I'm really late to the game for. Um, but it's To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. So this is about Laura Jean who writes letters to all the boys she has crushes on but she doesn't send them. But one day they get sent out and she has to deal with the consequences. YA romance, contemporary romance, is a hit or miss for me. Um, this was definitely a hit. Like, it took all of my favorite tropes from cheesy teen romance movies and, like, wrapped it up into one book. I mean, I and also just, like, Laura Jean and Peter. Like, they own me. Like, I, I can't. And Laura Jean is so funny. She's so relatable and she has the best fashion sense, which I'm so jealous of. Like, I wish I dressed like her when I was in high school, but c'est la vie. The fifth book I'm going to be talking about is one that's being talked about everywhere. Uh, it's Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. So everyone and their mother is talking about the movie adaptation, but the book just blew, blew me out of the water. I'm going to post an individual review of this but I had to include it on this list just because of how fantastic it is. It had both me and my mother like carrying the book around like I was constantly like how, what what page are you on? And she was like oh my gosh I'm on this page what page are you on? And I'm like I'm on this page she says okay when you get a cat caught up you like you tell me where you are. We were like in like a race to finish this book just so we could talk about it and how good it was. I mean, this is one of the tensest books I've ever read, and I still think about it. So the sixth book I'm going to be talking about, and the last one, is Six of Crows. <laughs> Do you see what I did there? <laughs> Six book, Six of Crows. <laughs> um, it is... Okay, it is about six criminals who go on, like, this heist to a different country to like steal something obviously it's a heist they to steal something that will get them a lot of money that's all I can say because I feel like telling you any more be ruining it and that's the last thing I would ever want to do so I just love the Grishaverse 
this is the only book I've read so far in the Grishaverse, and I know everyone's, like, on their high horse about Shadow and Bone Trilogy because apparently, like, the characters suck or something. I don't care. Like, the Grishaverse is so good because of how much detail Lee Bardugo puts into every culture. Are you done? But what really got me about this book was the characters and the romance. So I am not a big fangirl anymore. Like in my heyday, I was like the biggest fangirl. But not anymore. I've grown. I've matured. But this got me in my feelings. Holy shit. Like I fell in love with each of these characters individually and was just rooting for all of them. But the romance, oh my gosh, I had so much to say. Like, I am so emo about all of these romances. Like, I love them. I want them to get married and have babies. Like, even them touching was just, or not touching even, just like breathing each other's air had me like gasping, like, oh, I love them. And it, may, it was really embarrassing because I'm a 23 year old woman, but who cares? Like, books are for fun, so. So that is all the books I have to talk about today. Like I've said in other videos, not my greatest reading year. Let's hope 2019 is better. Um, but I think I had a pretty good selection. These are all books that had left uh, uh, me with good feelings or creepy feelings, which are just as good feelings. Um, if you read any of these, I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to hear what your best books of 2018 were. Uh, tell me in the comments and I will probably put them on my TBR because I have no, no self-restraint. Um, but that is all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.